<laughs> our emotions can impact and affect our health our overall well-being and how we practice self-care, including how we eat, how we sleep, if we exercise, and any type of healthy habits that we are trying to practice. So our emotions are going to impact that. So be aware of that. Pay attention to um, if anxiety is creeping in and impacting some of your positive health behaviors. Uh, according to the American Psychology Association, anxiety is characterized as feelings of tension, worry thoughts, and physical changes. And if we think about that and what that looks like, because we've all experienced some form of anxiety, everyday anxiety, here and now, it, there's a physical feeling, right? We experience rapid heartbeat, sweating, dizziness, maybe some head tension, some trembling, and that's a normal, that's our body's normal response to fear of the unknown or some type of threat as our body perceives it as such. So anxiety is among many of the emotion that we experience as we navigate life. And from time to time, most of us can tolerate that and we can deal with it. We can de-stress but for some people, it's really hard and being cognizant of that and showing compassion and empathy for them is really important, including ourselves, because everyday anxiety, if we're not dealing with it, it can lead to long term anxiety disorders. And that's when it's time to step back if we're not able to deal with our everyday stress and it's hindering us from moving forward, then that's when it's time to seek professional counseling. And there's nothing wrong with that. Different life events, genetics, uh, our environment, all different things can impact anxiety and maybe it manifesting into something more serious where we need to seek some conventional treatments. Some of the conventional treatments include psychotherapy, or medications. And then there are also new alternative treatments such as acupuncture, biofeedback, neurostimulation, and holistic approaches, which I'm excited about because that's kind of what I tap into when dealing with clients or my team or my family and trying to share some of the benefits of practicing meditation, being mindful, exercising, participating in yoga, aerobic exercise, strength training, flexibility training, using guided imagery, eating healthy every single day, practicing stress management, using progressive muscle relaxation, which we did the other day together, just being able to monitor our mood and using creative outlets to release some of that everyday anxiety is really important, whether it's through journaling, poetry, listening to music, creating a calm, inviting environment, um, coloring, participating in pottery, gartering, whatever it is that lets you creatively release some anxiety is really beneficial to your mental health, your brain health. So some of the research that's been coming out over the past 30 years or so concerning exercise and mental health is really exciting. When I started back in the day, 25 plus years ago, exercise was not prescribed to help people deal with stress and anxiety. Exercise is more about physical fitness, taking care of our bones, our bodies, being strong, preventing injury, stretching, that was, you know, impre increasing muscle mass, those types of things, um, or a way to recover from injury. So today, thankfully, exercise is also seen as a modality to help people deal with mental health or to manage their brain health. So, you know, in the, in the late 80s, they started studying exercise and its relationship to mental health and those feelings of positive mood, a general well-being in relationship to anxiety and depression. And the interesting thing is there's no one size fits all, just like with nutrition. There's no one size fix, fits all. So it's really important as being 
healthy humans that we find out what works best for us. So again, back in the day when I first started out in this profession, it was all about people's physical health, you know, working with athletes, working with people in a gym environment. And, you know, over the years, I have found personally also noticing that exercise really did impact somebody's mood. And that's, for me, the most gratifying thing to see is how people's moods change when they're participating in exercise that's fun. So with that said, I would say I would train and work with athletes very differently or somebody who's in for weight management because there's an obesity issue there. It's very different than working with someone who's dealing with stress and anxiety. And during the years, you know, I've I've worked with people who are on medication for anxiety in very high stressful jobs, people that really have a lack of body awareness, a lack of social awareness. And a lot of that is, is because there's a lack of being in tune with their bodies, whether it's physically or emotionally. And when you start to see people tap into that part of themselves, their whole life changes. You see an awakening that's really beautiful. And the way to do that, so for those of you that are dealing with anxiety or working with people that deal with anxiety, it's really important to understand that fun is key. The fun factor element is really important when it comes to exercise prescription. And I always see exercise as another form of prescription for fostering healthy humans. So keeping that in mind, it's important to know that regular exercise is important to help with those emotions. Uh, so any type of research that has studied pre and post exercise, the longitudinal studies show that it needs to be something that we do every single day on a consistent basis to see those positive, the positive results on anxiety levels. So just like eating healthy, it's not something that you can do just a couple days in a row and then stop and then fall off the wagon. For long-term health, we need to do it on a consistent basis. So when people participate in exercise, it's recommended the minimum is 30 minutes a day at a moderate intensity level. So moderate intensity means from 30 to 70% of their maximum heart rate. That's considered some aerobic training. And that can be broken down for those of you that don't have 30 minutes to set aside into smaller increments. But when you participate in 30 minutes of exercise every single day for the next 24 hours, it helps with mood regulation. It helps deal with those anxiety levels. So that's really important to keep in mind. Try to make it a regular part of your everyday activity, just like getting up and brushing your teeth, taking a shower, brushing your hair, making whatever it is on your to-do list, 30 minutes every single day. That's what has been shown to help with mood, mental health, and anxiety levels. Now, when you're talking about exercise, there's aerobic training, so you can talk about brisk walking, hiking, riding a bike, uh, participating, in doing cartwheels, some type of HIIT training, uh, any type of aerobic activity that increases your oxygen intake, which makes sense because that increases blood flow through all, throughout your body, including your brain, which is the super, super important organ and that regulates these moods and our thoughts and then they create you know, action. Interestingly enough, aerobic, excuse me, anaerobic exercise has also been shown to reduce levels of anxiety. Um, and that's something more recent or the, within the last 20 years. So that's still considered cutting edge in terms of research. So for anaerobic weight training type of activities, you want to get your heart rate up to 30 to 50% of your maximum heart rate that does show to help with mood regulation and anxiety levels. In addition, more recently, flexibility training, yoga, Tai Chi, they also have been shown to help with anxiety levels and have a positive impact on 
our mood regulation. So it's not necessarily that it has to be aerobic. Any type of movement has been helped to decrease anxiety levels. And that's very different than it was um, just a decade or two ago. So with that in mind, I would say to all of you that just huh, haven't found it in your wheelhouse to make exercise a part of your everyday life, just think about something fun, something fun that you like to do and just give it a try. Have some fun. You break it up. Even if it can only do 10 or 20 minutes, that's still going to help four to six hours afterwards. You're still going to reap the benefits of what you did and those feel good hormones and know that um, it's all about creating a life that brings you some sense of joy, some sense of fulfillment and know that it does it's not no pain no gain throw that whole concept of exercise out the window unless you're talking about physical fitness goals when we're talking about well-being and our mental health and our brain health find something that you do that you enjoy go out there make it happen and you know just show up being the best person you can be for you for yourself every day and that will translate into healthy relationships at home and with everybody in your community. With that, have a fantastic Friday and get out there and have some fun. Be well.